Hey, what's up, people? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Desmond Z. If <laughs> this is the first time, why did I say Desmond Z? Why did I say it like that? My name is Desmond Z. If it's the first time that you've ever seen me, I come to you today. I come to you to talk about a battle, to talk about a struggle within the bookish community. The books on your shelf, the books on your shelves that are unread versus the books that you keep buying. The books you walk into the bookstore and you put in your basket. You in Target, you in Walmart, you somewhere where there are books being sold and you pick, you keep picking them up. You keep picking them up. But you know you got books at home. But you know you got books at home. And see, the thing is, the thing is, most of these books on these shelves are red. Like, I've read the ratio between red and unread. The red ones are winning. Like, I've read most of these on here. But even, even, even if I hadn't, even if I hadn't, you can't kick my ass. But the thing is, it's just like, every time new books are released, I'm like, oh, that sounds good. I need to read that. Oh, that sounds good. I need to read that. And it's like, I gotta, it's like I gotta have it right now. I gotta get to it right now. And then there are some books that I buy that like, I know I'm not gonna read right now, but I need to go ahead and just get it. Just let me get it. Because I know eventually I'm gonna get to it. And so it's, all, it's always, it's, it's a battle, it's a struggle. But I have some on my shelf that I really wanna get to soon. So I'm gonna talk about some of those. Also talk about some books that I recently read. Sex, Lies, and Sensibility. This was written by Nikki Payne and it was recently released like back in February, I believe. Yeah, February of this year. I have already read this book. This is one of the, this is one of the new releases that, that, that jumped that jumped the gun, jumped ahead of everybody else that was in line. I read this book and I really enjoyed it. It is about this girl. What's this girl's name? Her name was was it Nora? Was it Nora? I believe. Oh, look at. I remember. Oh, I remember. It's about this girl named Nora. Her father dies. They were estranged, and. She goes to his funeral uh, with her sister and her mother. Only thing they get, because he had money, he's like in the, the seasoning business or whatever. He had like a whole seasoning empire or whatever. So she did some things that made her father like dis, partially like disown her. They like, that caused the estrangement between the two of them. So she was working at like CVS or something, even though her father had like all his money. Once they get to the funeral, the only thing that they have is this inn that's like in the middle of nowhere. It's like in Maine or something, I believe. But it's close to like indigenous land. Well, all this is indigenous land. But it's like close to a reservation. And so she starts to work with this guy named Bear who gives like tours or whatever around like this reservation or close to it. Her and her sister have a year to get this thing up and running and make it profitable or they lose it all and they don't have any, any inheritance at all. Nora's sister, Nora's sister, what was her name? Was it Shan? Shani? Sh what, what, what was her sister's name? I cannot remember for the life of me her sister's name, but what I will say is that Nora is better than me. Nora's better than me because her sister didn't want to do nothing but chase me. Every five minutes, the sister had somebody else that she was sniffing up under. First, it was Bear's cousin. Then it was some man named John. And then it was some, some other dude. It was just every five minutes, baby. She was sniffing under this woman, this man, some of everybody. She was running off, rubbing her crystals and doing all this and doing all that, doing everything. But so getting, a, getting a broom, sweeping some floors, painting some walls. She was doing everything but what she was supposed to do. Baby, you need to grab a broom. You need to grab a paintbrush. You need to do something to get this motherfucker up and running because we only got a year or we lose everything. I'm sorry, I would've had to, I'm sorry. I, I would've had to take her to the backyard and we would've had to throw hands. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nora, you better than me, girl. You better than me. It also gave us a chance to acknowledge like blind spots that these two people of color can have when it comes to the other. Like as a black person, your blind spots to this indigenous person, their culture and things that you might say that you don't re realize that could be offensive and vice versa. Uh, so I did enjoy that. I'm not Native American, but I feel like Bear was portrayed in a very good way. Like he had depth. It wasn't just like some surface level character. Uh, so if you are Native American and you read this book, I would like 
to know like your thoughts on this. Funny story by Emily Henry. I got an advanced copy of that book. I believe it's going to be published on April 29th or the 30th, uh, whatever that Tuesday is. I can't believe it. it's at the end of April. Just it's at the end of April. I got an advanced copy of that book. I really enjoyed it. I gave it like four stars. There is something about Emily Henry's books. There's always a certain spot in her books that I get to and it kind of drags for me. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's like an editing thing or what, but it's, it always gets to a certain point where I feel like, okay, we can just kind of delete this or we can end it a little bit sooner. I say that about almost every book. I know y'all get tired of me saying it. I don't know what it is. I cannot explain it. I just feel like there's a certain, it always a certain spot I get to and I kind of get bored, but then it kind of, it picks back up for me. Except for Happy, happy Place, I did not like that. I did not like Happy Place at all. But Funny Story is about this lady named Daphne. She is like early 30s. She's engaged to this guy named Peter. He ends up breaking her heart, calling out their engagement. So she moves in with this guy named Miles. Th Miles, his girlfriend, now his ex-girlfriend, is the woman that Peter left Daphne for. So Daphne ends up living with the woman that replaced her, she ends up living with her, uh, her old man. And so now these two are living together. They're, uh, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how to navigate this whole thing. They're both trying to mend their broken hearts. And Daphne's like, I got to get the hell up out of this town because I'm not even from her. I moved her. I let this man completely just like take over my life. She uh, started hanging out with his friends, started hanging out with his family, like everything in Daphne's world revolved around Peter, the way she ate, exercised, all of that. So she has to like unravel her entire life because she was so intertwined with this man. And it, it was fun, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the relationship between Miles and Daphne. It was funny, it was cute. It was a good story. Uh, that comes out, like I said, April 29th, April 30th, one of those. I'll put it on the screen. How to Solve Your Own Murder is another recent re uh, release, and I borrowed this on Libby, and I was actually listening to the audiobook, and I was really enjoying it. So I was in the bookstore, and I, and I saw the physical, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and buy the physical, because I'm going to read it. I'm enjoying the audiobook. How about I just get the physical and finish it that way? I'm really enjoying it. Before I even got to pick up the physical after buying it, I was still like listening to the audio and I stopped enjoying it. I, and I was just like, I was like, please, please, I, I just need, I, you, you reach a point in a book and suddenly it's no longer, it just, for some reason, you fall out of the story. It just, the magic, the, magic, the thrill is gone. The thrill is gone and you can't get it back. So now the book has just been sitting on my shelf. I mean, sitting, it was actually sitting on the, on the kitchen counter because I ain't picked it up. I didn't even bring it and put it on the shelf. It's just been sitting on the counter. Now I feel like I wasted my $22 because I'm not enjoying this. I don't know what it is. Maybe I should just go ahead and start reading it physically, but yeah, it lost me, and I'm just so mad that literally a day or two after I bought this book, I stopped enjoying it, and I was just, this, this, is, what, this is why I should have been reading what's on the shelf. This is why I should have been reading what's on the shelf. An American Marriage. I have talked about this book before. I, a couple of times, I believe. I bought this physical back in December because I said that the audio book wasn't doing it. This is one of those instances where I was listening to the audio and it just like, it wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. I don't know, it just, it wasn't, okay? So I told you I bought the physical in uh, last December and I have yet to pick this book back up since then. But I really do want to read it because I was like halfway through the physical. I mean, the audio, it wasn't like, oh, five or 10% in and it wasn't working. Like I was, I really tried and I was 50% through. So obviously, I was interested enough to stay around that long because I would, I would have been, I would have been a little clocked out, baby. This is one that just, it just keeps coming back around. It sticks, it sticks in the membrane. It's sticking. So I feel like I just need to read it. I'm be so mad if I do and I complete this and I just don't like it. 
but at least I can say, at least I can say I tried, I tried. I've talked about this book a million times. I don't need to read the synopsis again. If you don't know what it's about, Google it. Um, that's horrible for me to say as a book reviewer. Like, I'm supposed to give you the synopsis, but I've talked about this book enough. So, yeah, I really do. I want to read this, and I am I will. August. I bought this book, I don't believe it was a year. It hasn't been a year, but it's been more than six months. I believe it's almost, it's almost a year. I believe I bought this summer 2023, and I have yet to read it. I have yet to read it. I have yet to pick it up again since I purchased it. Who, where is the synopsis, girl? Now, I don't want, why is the author being talked about on the front page where it's supposed to be the synopsis? What is this about? So some boy, he moves after his parents' divorce and he's playing football, doing homework in his new town. But when his role in a shocking act of violence throws him off course once more, he flees. No, oh, Lord, he done, he done a fugitive. He flees to a ranch in, in rural Montana where he learns that even the smallest communities have dark secrets. Covering August's adolescence from age 12 to 19. So this is a coming of age story about a kid who after his parents divorce, they move and he get into some shit. He get into some things that he ain't supposed to be into. And I, I can see why I picked it up. It, I can see why I picked it up. Reading this, it sounds like it would make great. For, this sounds like it would make great for an independent movie that would like sweep the sweep the Oscars. Best picture, best supporting actor, best actress, best screenplay, adapted screenplay, all of that. Like I just like something about this. Something about it. it feels cinematic. It feels cinematic. I think I feel that way about most coming of age stories. Like, yeah, just in general. Joan is okay. This is another one that I've bought and literally never picked it up again. Never picked it up again. Not because I have like no interest in it. Obviously, I purchased it, so I got some interest in it. But sometimes things just get lost. They get lost. They get they get lost in translation. They get lost in the shuffle, in the mess. You know, they just get it along the way. Other things. I'm telling you, those new releases. Those you know, every Tuesday, I'm down to the Libby. And I'm at the bookstore, I'm looking at the new releases, and they just got me in a choco. They got me. I'm sorry, Joan, but girl, you just really got through to the back. But Joan is a 30-something ICU doctor at a busy New York hospital, the daughter of Chinese parents who come to the United States. da 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 Oh, once Joan and her brother Fang were established in their careers, their parents moved back to China, hoping to spend the rest of their lives in their homeland. But Joan's father suddenly dies, and her mother returns to America to reconnect with her chillings. A series of events send Joan spiraling out of her comfort zone, um, just as her hospital, her city, and the world are forced to reckon with a health crisis. Is this about the anyone can? Is this about when was this published? Is this about COVID? This was 2022, wasn't it? Or this might be about COVID. You know, no, I actually don't have a problem with reading books about COVID. I, I see that in a lot of reviews about books that feature the pandemic people say it's just too soon it's too early for them and i'm i can't you know um say that they're wrong in that but i personally i don't mind reading books that talk about um covid so if it was that wouldn't be an issue for me this does sound interesting and it's and it's short y'all know i love a short book y'all know i love not too short but um just i, I like sweet the good sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, this list. Yeah, 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 yeah. This like 207 pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says 212, but the actual novel itself starts it stops at like 209. Oh yeah, I can go ahead and knock this out. Joan is Joan is okay. Joan is a okay. One summer in Savannah. Now, I told y'all about this back in December. I bought this book in December, uh same time I purchased the physical of an, an American marriage. Because the narrator for this one, the narrator for this one was speaking in a way that it just, it wasn't, it wasn't working for me. It wasn't working for me. Yeah, because I don't want to speak negatively about anyone's performance or like, I, I don't know if y'all noticed that. Like when I talk about books, I will say if I didn't like a book, I just didn't like it. That's just the way it works. Because you may love something, I might hate it. I say that a million times on here. You may love it. It may work for you, but it don't work for me and vice versa. So if you ever take a book re recommendation for me, and I tell you, I love this book. I loved it down. 
and you read it and you say, what the fuck is this? I'm never listening to Desmond again. You know what? That's just the way the ball bounces. It's a risk, okay? We take, we take risk. It's a literary risk that you just gotta take. I don't know why, why I went on that tangent, but One Summer in Savannah, I didn't care for that audiobook at all. No disrespect. No disrespect to the narrator, girl. Keep doing your thing. What is this about? It's been eight years since Sarah Lancaster. Do y'all say Lancaster or Lancaster? It depends. Uh, it's been eight years since Sarah Lancaster left her home. Eight years since her daughter Alana came into this world following a terrifying assault that left deep emotional wounds. Uh, Sarah would do anything to forget. But when Sarah's father falls ill, she's forced to return home and face the ghost of her past. Like, there's, there's some deep things going on here. There's some deep things going on in here. And this book is also kind of long. Y'all know how I feel. Y'all know my definition of long. Yeah, this is 400, ooh, 450, ooh, wait, hold on. This is 450 pages, ooh, wait. Y'all know we can start getting close to 500, baby. Ooh, wait, ooh, wee. Hold on, Miss Harris, girl, I don't know, Miss Harris. This might be the reason why I ain't picked it up. Miss Harris, what's we going on with this 450 pages, girl? Oh no. The Sundown Motel. This is not about sundown towns. When I first picked this book up, I saw the cover, I thought it was gonna be about uh, sundown towns. Not that I'm desperately seeking to read a book about sundown towns, but that's just what I thought it was about. Although sundown towns do fascinate me, and I, for lack of a better word, not fascinate me like I think they're great, but it's just, they're very, it's interesting to know just the logic the, the history and just the ignorance behind what makes a sundown town a sundown town, so it boggles my mind, boggles my mind. And then you have people who say, oh, why do they always make it about race? And when you, the fact that sundown town still exists, that's why, that's, that's why. Like no one's making it about race, it just is. Like no one's making it, it is. Um, but the Sundown Motel is about, I don't even know what this book is about. We got a woman named Viv in 1982, goes to this motel, starts working here to earn some coin, and then she disappears. And then in 2017, her niece come looking and trying to figure out what happened to her. This, you know, I'm, I'm interested, I'm interested. And how, how many pages is this? Like 320 something, 320 something? Okay, 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 yeah, yeah. So a cute, a nice little mystery. Nice little thriller. That's another thing with me. Like, y'all know mostly I read literary fiction, but I also really love mysteries and thrillers. But I, it's such a, such a love-hate thing because they're either good or they're not. It's very, it's, it's never, never anything in the middle. I either really love it or I either really hate it because I don't like slow, I like fast-paced thrillers, mysteries, all of it. It, it needs to be quick. It needs to be quick. I don't like nothing long, drawn out, and just don't. Don't come to me with the dumb shit. Don't come to me with the dumb shit when it comes to mysteries and thrillers. The bar is very high. It's high. Shark Heart. This is when I recently bought this. This is not one that's been sitting on my shelf for a while, but I did try several times to listen to the audio and it was not working for me, but I desperately wanted to read this book. It, it reads kind of like, um, like a screenplay and that was just what, it wasn't working for me in, um, in audio form. Like it, it, it wasn't. Sometimes in mixed, uh, I really do enjoy like mixed media type of books where, you know, you have a bunch of text threads or emails, Romantic Company, y'all know how much I love that book, um, and things things like that. So I don't mind the mixed media, but it's just, it that doesn't always translate on audio. Sometimes it really works. When it's like a whole production and we have like sound effects and all of that, it really, really works. Uh, like Crimes of Passion that I read last year, amazing. It doesn't always translate and this wasn't. So that's why I bought the physical for this, where this is basically Lewis and Ren, they're a couple, and then their first uh, year of marriage, something crazy changes, and I think the husband, basically, he's turning into a shark or something like that. Yeah, 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 he's, his uh, physical body will gradually turn into a great white shark. So, yeah, it's kind of trippy, magical realism type of thing. Young Mungo, I have been meaning to read this book for well over a year now, well over a 
year is but I keep looking at it I keep looking at it and I'm going to try my best to get to it soon young mo to, young mo <laughs> mo to the eat to the mo to the uh, uh, uh. this is a coming of age story about Mungo and James um the dangerous first love of two young men I've talked about this book quite a few times I've read nothing um but mostly good reviews of this book people who read it really really love it and of course you always have some people who don't like it it's just the way it goes so yeah I'm really interested in this I I, I, I look at it all the time on my shelf and I promise I promise to myself not to y'all like <laughs> we're not even gonna go there I promise that I will get to it soon like you hear me you see me Desmond I'm talking to you right here young man in the camera you will read this soon yeah that's really it i just want to talk about some of the books that um i really want to get to and some of the new releases that i have read recently uh if you struggle with the same thing let's conversate let's converse down in the comments let me know that i am not alone you are not alone and i am here with you and though you're lovely. Okay, that's it. I'm done. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are not subscribed. I will see you in my next one. Thank you for watching.